are in listen only mode. Hello everyone, thank you for joining us this afternoon. Uh, really happy to see we have another great turnout for this webinar. And today we're going to show you the different tools that are available in the Lightspeed Technical Analysis Center. I'm Mike Zedek, I'm the Managing Director of Retail Trading for Lightspeed. And joining me today is Peter Ashton. He's the Vice President of Product and Strategy for Recognia. Recognia specializes in building actionable investment research tools, really with a focus on technical analysis. And we at Lightspeed have worked with them for several years now. Uh, bring, we brought their analysis software to our clients, and we've even worked together on developing specialized tools that are specifically designed for active traders, and you'll see some of these today. Everything that you see in today's webinar, all these tools are currently available to Lightspeed clients, and we do that at no charge. And we're providing these tools because we're really confident that they can help traders find more opportunities to profit. So if you are an existing client, you can access our technical analysis center by simply logging into lightspeed.com and then proceeding to Lightspeed Spotlight and then going to the technical analysis center tab. So after each part of the presentation, because we're going to cover a few different tools today, we're going to take questions from the audience. So if you have anything that you would like to ask during the presentation, you can do so by typing in your question to the chat box on the webinar console. So now without any delay, let's uh, turn the presentation over to Peter. Well, thanks, Mike. So uh, I'm Peter Ashton. I'm the Vice President of Products at Recognia. And in today's webinar, I'd like to go through the different Recognia products that are provided to Lightspeed users inside the Lightspeed Spotlight community. And what I'd like to do is show you some of the key features of each product and also demonstrate how the products can be used in your trading. So specifically, we'll cover four products. We'll cover Technical Insight, which is our automated technical analysis and chart pattern recognition tool. We'll go through Strategy Builder, which is our tool for building, testing, and sharing investment strategies. We'll take a look at Value Analyzer, which is a tool to evaluate at a glance whether a particular um, stock is overvalued, undervalued, or fairly valued. And last, we'll look at a product that was built specifically in conjunction with Lightspeed, which is called Intraday Trader. And this is uh, kind of the flagship product for doing intraday technical analysis and chart pattern recognition based on real-time data. Now, before we do that, though, I'd like to talk a little bit about who Recogni is. So we're in the business of providing what we call actionable investment research. These are products that are aimed primarily at self-directed investors and traders. Our products are intended to automate the investment decision-making process using a very guided and interpreted experience, which, which we intend to teach as well as to inform. And we've been working in this space for about 10 years, and we've won numerous awards for our products. So with that said, I'd like to spend the rest of the time actually going through some, some product demos. So I'm going to begin by going into the Lightspeed community. And for those of you who are not sure where to find Recognize tools, in fact, inside the community, there's this tab called Technical Analysis. When you click on that, you get these two links that pop up, Intraday Trader, which is the product that pops up by default, and Technical Insight, which is our other technical analysis tool. So let's start with Technical Insight. And as I said, this is a tool for finding chart patterns and other technical events um, based on end-of-day data. So Technical Insight essentially is scanning the entire market for you every day. So it looks at every single stock and ETF in the U.S. and identifies where there have been interesting technical events. And technical events is the language that we use to refer to anything that's happened which is interesting from the perspective of technical analysis. So moving average crossover is a technical event. A shooting star is a technical event. Or a head and shoulders bottom is a technical event. Any one of those we will detect in, uh, in the stock. So there are really kind of three ways in which traders will use technical insight. First, they can use it to give them new trade ideas, what might be hot today based on various technical events that have occurred. They can use it to um, validate ideas they may already have. So maybe uh, there's something that's in the news today or some stock they've been following for some time, and you can use technical insight to look at whether now is the right time to take a position. And last, we can use it to help manage our risk by looking at things like support and resistance levels as well as trailing stops. So to begin with, on the main landing page of Technical Insight, we actually have um, these sections we call, I'm going to come up to my screen here, we actually call the, the featured events. So every day we'll give you five trading ideas if you're bullish and five if you're bearish. So these are based on the strongest technical events in the market. 
So today, Technical Insight thinks that the most bullish event or most bullish stock is something called Dice Holdings, which had a symmetrical continuation triangle. The last price was 1414, and based on this particular pattern, we're seeing a target price in the range of $20.50 to $22. And that target price just comes from the principles of technical analysis. Um, we also see a pattern duration of 62 days, and we can project that forward and expect that to be the rough period of time it will take to reach that target price. So we get some other events here. So VeriSign had a continuation diamond. Akamai had a continuation wedge. A company called Ultrapar Participacion had a continuation diamond. And uh, Micrel had a continuation wedge. So there's five very bullish technical events you might want to look at today. And today the market's actually moving down. So some bearish events. There's a continuation diamond on SWS Group. Um, Progenics Pharmaceuticals had a head and shoulders top. So you can see how you can use these as the starting point of your day's research to get a sense of you know, what might be a good investment for the day. Now in addition to giving you what technical insight thinks are the most bullish or most bearish events, we can also look at what other users of the product are doing. So you see there's this tab that says most viewed, and if you click on that, what we'll tell you is what are the most viewed technical events. So for example, today's most viewed bearish events well, we had a uh, Bollinger Band event on Apple. Uh, we had a top triangle on Caterpillar. We had a descending continuation triangle on the ProShares Ultra Short QQQ. So lots of different um, uh, of events you can use here, trying to draw upon what other users of the product are actually looking at. Now, for any one of these, we can actually go into it in more detail and see what the event is actually telling us. So here's that. Um, that event for the ProShares Ultra Short QQQ ETF. So we get some information here saying this is a descending continuation triangle. It's an intermediate term bearish event. The last price on this ETF was 45.83. And again, this is a bearish event, and we're seeing a target price which is lower in the 34 to $36 range. If I scroll down a little bit here, you know, here's the uh, the price history for uh, for QID, and you can clearly see the um, the bearish. Um, event that we've actually highlighted here. And this pink area you see on the chart is what's called the target price region. So this dark pink down here, this is the target price. We think we said it was uh, $34 to $36, this dark pink area here. And the width of this rectangle essentially gives you a sense of the approximate time frame that Technical Insight thinks it's going to take to reach the target price. And this all just comes from the principles of technical analysis. And if you're wondering what this red square means, that's just the date at which this event was confirmed. It's the date at which we broke out the bottom of this particular triangle. Um, now, I mentioned earlier that one of the ways you can actually use um, technical insight is to help you manage your risk through things like support and resistance and stops. So for any event, you'll see that there's a couple of panels here called support and resistance and stops. And if I open up the support and resistance panel, you see it's telling me that Recognia sees support for this stock today at 45.53, and it sees resistance at 53.90. And this can be calculated over a number of different trading horizons. So what's by default shown is the intermediate term trading horizon, which is 250 bars. And each bar is a day, essentially. So this is quite a long, uh, long price history. We're calculating these support and resistance levels only over. You can also look at the short term, and I can recalculate that. Um, you can see that the resistance level changed significantly there. Or I can go very short to something like 40 bars and recalculate. And again, you'll see the resistance level changed again. So you can use these you know, in your trading to understand where you might want to place your order, where you might want to try to get out of your position, and you can even set, use it for things like trailing stops. Um, now there is actually a trailing stop function you can see here in this panel. And what I can do here is let Recognia calculate for me the appropriate trailing stop that I might want to use for this position. Now we can do that two ways. We can do a percentage trailing stop, which is just a percent below the last price, and that's kind of the, you know, the traditional way of doing trailing stops. So if you're a aficionado of the Investor's Business Daily, you'll know that they recommend an 8% trailing stop, so I can set my stop that way. But there's also another kind of stop called the Recognia trailing stop, and these are a bit more sophisticated stops. These actually are volatility adjusted stops where we look at a long price history of the security and calculate how much day-to-day -day volatility is normal and then uh, consider that when we actually give you the trailing stop level. So we essentially build a, a price line and then um, uh, have a volatility range 
which we use to calculate the trailing stop. And again, those stops can be tight, medium, or loose, depending on your risk tolerance and your trading horizon. So if I ask for a tight stop and recalculate it, you see that the stop level that it recommends for me is, um, is 4701. So those are, those are ways you can actually use um, trailing stops and support and resistance in your trading. Now I mentioned that um, you know, there's lots of ways of finding trade ideas, and another way I'd like to show you is something called the technical event screener. And again, up at the top of the page here, you can see that there's a link, or if I go back to the overview page, there's actually a panel that's dedicated to the technical event screener. So the screener can be used in two ways. We can do what's called a preset search. So there's some searches that are preset up for you, which are very commonly used searches. And those might be things like show me highly traded bullish stocks or highly traded bear stocks. Show me stocks with a long-term bullish outlook. Or one of the more common ones is show me stocks with a possible 15% increase or decrease. So if I click that, we're basically going to look into our database and give you a number of possibilities where the target price is 15% or more above or below the, um, the current price of the, uh, the stock. So I've asked for, for bullish events here. So now you can see here's a number of different stocks where the current target price is 15% or more higher than the last price we have for the stock. So Finisar, for example, is an interesting one. There's a head and shoulders bottom we saw in this particular stock. And if I go into this, you can see here's the actual event and here's the target price range. So that's another way you can actually use technical insight to generate trading ideas. Now, what if I already have an idea of my own? I've brought an idea, and I, I heard um, you know, someone talking about a stock on, uh, on CNBC, or I read about it in the Wall Street Journal, and I want to find out more whether now's the right time to get into this position. Well, there's something called the technical event lookup. And again, you can get at it through this menu at the top of the page, or again, from the overview page, there's actually a panel dedicated to technical event lookup. Um, so I can say, um, let's look into um, let's say Apple, for example. What, what does the technical outlook for Apple look like? Um, so it's had a big run-up, obviously. Um, so let's look into the database that Recogni maintains and see what kinds of events we know about for Apple. So here's a two-year price history for Apple. And you can see that these red squares represent the bearish events. And these green dots are bullish events. And black triangles are events which are uh, neither bullish nor bearish. But overall, in the summary view, Technical Insight knows about 10 bullish and 3 bearish events. Uh, we found support at 346.06 and no resistance level, which is interesting. And here's even the summary of your stops uh, based on a Recognia trailing stop medium. If I scroll down, you can see here are all the different technical events that Recognia knows about for Apple. And certainly since uh, about the end of June, it's looked very, very bullish. So even though the market has been... Uh, um, very much in the downtrend uh, and quite choppy, um, you can see that Apple has maintained a fairly bullish outlook with the vast majority of the events being quite bullish. These events, by the way, can be looked at in some different ways. This is called the, um, uh, the standard view. There's also what's called the detailed view. We'll give you a set of charts you can look at uh, as part of your research, or we have what are called the thumbnail views. So you can look at every single te signal technical event on a chart to get a sense for, um, for what's going on. Just for fun, let's look at a stock that I've been following, which is Boeing, BA. So I got interested in Boeing just after the Paris Air Show, where uh, Boeing announced a lot of business and uh, really made Airbus look quite bad. Um, but if you look at the outlook for Boeing, um, it had a number of uh, bullish events for a while. But as of late, it's been predominantly very, very bearish. Um, so if I look down at the, the list of events, I mean, it's been very bearish since um, about the beginning of June. And I think the Paris Air Show was in, was in May. Um, so certainly things are not looking very good for Boeing. So if I was thinking of taking position, I might tend to wait and just see if things are going to go down a little bit more. Um, going back a little bit further, you can see that as of the end of last year, though, Recogni was very bullish on Boeing. And in fact, if I take a look at this particular event, a continuation diamond that occurred um, uh, December 29th, so at the very end of 2010, you, know, you can see that the stock had been in a bit of a run-up went through a bit of a consolidation period where this diamond pattern formed. We confirmed the event where this green dot is shown. And in fact, the stock went on to resume its, um, its climb and actually did surpass the, the target price region uh, before starting to decline. So I, if I'd actually used this particular pattern, I probably would have done quite well in my position with Boeing. Now, 
some of you may be saying, um, you know, this all sounds very interesting, but uh, I really don't understand these events in the way I need to. You know, what exactly is a continuation diamond? Or tell me more about these candlestick patterns like shooting stars and so on. Well, there's a significant amount of built-in education as part of um, technical insight. So if I click the education link at the top of the page, I get a page of education that comes up that talks about all the different kinds of events that are recognized in this product. And they're organized into what are called classic patterns, things like uh, diamonds and triangles and wedges and so on, short-term patterns, which are often called candlestick patterns, indicators, which are usually moving average crossovers, and oscillators, things like MACD and um, long-term long and short-term, sorry, fast and slow stochastics and so on. Um, those are all oscillators. So if I, don't, if I want to learn more about a uh, you know, head and shoulders bottom, tell me what that means, then I can click on that link and I can get more information. I get a description of what it is. Here's a picture of what it might look like. Um, here's some variations. Here's some important characteristics to think about when I'm looking for this pattern. And trading considerations. Here's how I actually use it in my trading. So for every single one of the 65 different kinds of technical events that are recognized in Technical Insight, there's an education page that looks like this that describes exactly what that event is all about and, and how Recognia recognizes it. So sometimes you might even find a pattern and you say, well, I don't, I don't agree with this pattern. I don't think that's really, a, um, that's really a double top. Well, you can go in and look at what Recognia describes as a double top, and we'll tell you, here's the characteristics that define a double top for us. So we're very transparent about how we actually define and recognize these, uh, these events. And the last thing I'll show you as part of Technical Insight is the alerts. And for many users of Technical Insight, this is actually the most powerful part of the product. And I have no alerts set up in this account yet, but you know, let's suppose I'm interested in putting some money in the market and I have some specific ideas of where that is. So I might want to um, create an alert that alerts me to new opportunities. Um, so I'll say next. And I'm going to look for stocks that trade just on the New York Stock Exchange and which are in the oil and gas industry. So maybe I'm very bullish on oil and gas right now. Now, what kind of events do you want to know about? Well, I'm only interested in, uh, in bullish events because I'm, I'm very bullish, and I want classic patterns. So I can select those things and finish. And what will happen is an alert will be set up for me. And what will happen is every single day, Technical Insight will scan the market, and where it finds events which are in the oil and gas sector for stocks that trade on the New York Stock Exchange, it will send me an email with those particular opportunities. So every morning I'll start the trading day with an email in my inbox giving me some ideas of uh, where I might want to uh, think about deploying some capital uh, in terms of these kind of opportunities. And that can be done for new opportunities. You can also set alerts corresponding to your positions in your portfolio. So you can get alerted about technical events that might be driving your portfolio one way or the other. And you can even be alerted about things like you know, one of, you, one of the stocks you're following crossing a, an important support and resistance level or crossing a trailing stop or all kinds of other things. So alerts are actually one of the most powerful parts of, of this particular product. So I'm going to pause right there and just see if there's any questions about technical insight before I move on to the next product. So we don't have any questions, Peter, so I think we can move on to uh, Strategy Builder. Okay, fantastic. So this is actually a, a great product, Strategy Builder. Um, this is something that can really be used to help a, an investor or a trader build their own investment strategy and use that to, to look for trading ideas or to select stocks they might want to buy for their portfolio. The interesting thing about Strategy Builder, which is very different than other, you know, sort of call them stock screeners that are out there, is that Strategy Builder not only lets you build a strategy which um, is unique to you and embodies the things that are important to you as an investor, but it also allows you to test that strategy and see how it would have worked historically. And that can build your confidence and give you uh, a sense of you know, whether you're going to do well or poorly based on what has happened in the past. So this is the main landing page of Strategy Builder. And you can see there are three main areas of the product. There's what is called My Save Screen. So these are screens or strategies that I've built for myself and are saved in the product, and I haven't built any yet. There are what are called featured screens. So these are, are screens that are created by what you might call experts. Um, so here's one, for example, called GARP, growth at a reasonable price provided by Recognia, or quality stocks at a reasonable price, unusually high volume. 
um, and I can view more, and there's lots of other ones in the product. But these are um, strategies that have been created by other, um, call them experts, um, that you can leverage in your trading. And then there's what is called the community screen. So these are uh, strategies that have been created by other Lightspeed users. Okay? And they can be sorted in different ways, the top performing screens or recently published screens. So I can try to leverage some of the, uh, the knowledge of, of the community or of other users of uh, Strategy Builder at Lightspeed to, um, to see what might be interesting to me. And in fact, here's a screen called Mike's Test Screen. I wonder if that's Mike Sedek who made that. Um, so it's returning 6.1% annualized return right now. So I'm going to build my own strategy. And uh, let's see how it actually works out. So I go to build a custom screen. And uh, right now I'm very bullish on mid-cap stocks. I think mid-caps are going to uh, probably outperform in the next, uh, next six months or so. So I'm going to try to build myself a strategy to pick mid-cap stocks. And before I begin, I want to just show you that there's lots and lots of different kinds of criteria you can use in your investment strategy. There's some 60 plus different fundamental criteria plus um, uh, you know, another 30-something technical criteria, so many, many criteria you can leverage to actually build a strategy that works for you. These criteria are divided into folders. These folders are shown here, so they're what are called popular criteria. These are the most popular ones amongst users. Ones that are called company basics, things that correspond to the company, like its market cap or its revenue, uh, sector and industry, and so on. Criteria related to debt to things like dividends, what's the dividend yield, what's the dividend growth rates, for example, growth in earnings, what's the EPS growth, performance, so performance related to how the stock is traded, what's the price performance in the last five days, in the last four weeks, the last 13 weeks, and so on, profitability of the company based on metrics like um, gross margin, return on equity, and so on, technical criteria, so you remember all those technical events that I showed you in Technical Insight? Well, all those same technical events can be used as part of your screening criteria inside Strategy Builder. So there are bullish classic patterns, bearish classic patterns, and bullish short-term patterns, and so on. There are criteria related to trading, things like uh, the 90-day average volume or the 10-day versus 90-day average volume, and things related to valuation, like price-to-earnings ratio, price-to-book ratio, those kind of, uh, of metrics. So let's get on with trying to build our, our mid-cap strategy. So under company basics, I'm going to pick market cap. And I'm going to add that as my first criteria. And you see market cap is specified. There's a numeric value at the low end and the high end. Uh, and then these sliders. So let's suppose I don't really even know what a mid-cap stock you know, consists of. I can just slide my sliders, and I can exclude all the little tiny companies at this end of the scale. I can exclude all the really big companies at this end of the scale. And I just kind of have the ones that are in the middle. So I'm actually looking at companies with market cap between $20 million and $1 billion. So quite a range of companies there. And I don't know if you noticed, but as I slid these sliders, these numbers here update in real time. So what this is telling me is right now there are 1,862 companies that match this particular criteria in the U.S. I'm going to add another one. I'm going to add a criteria related to debt. So debt is obviously very much in the news right now. So let's say we want a debt to equity ratio of one or less. So here I just overtyped that number here on the right hand side. So my debt to equity ratio now ranges from zero to one. Now I'm also going to add another one related to trading. And I want to find a company where the volume is ramping up. So I'm going to pick the 10 day versus 90 day average volume. And I'm going to say that I want to see uh, the 10-day volume at least 110% of the average 90-day volume. So the volume in the last 10 days has averaged 110% of the average 90-day volume. Um, and I'm going to actually slide that right to the end to maximum. And you can see that particular criteria is 2,816 matches. The debt-to-equity ratio criteria has 3,000 matches and so on. But taking all three criteria at the same time, the number of stocks that match is about 400 right now. So let's just leave it at that for the time being, and let's, let's go on and see which companies actually match this particular strategy right now. So under the Results Summary tab, here are the top five companies that match that particular strategy. So there's Meridian Biosciences, there's Travel Zoo, S1 Corp, 
Avid Technology and Banro Corp. Those are the top five matches of this particular strategy. So for any one of those, if I want to know why was Meridian Biosciences included, I can say view why, and Strategy Builder will tell me why this particular stock was included. It's included because its market cap is 884 million, which is within the range that I specified. Its debt to equity ratio is zero. And the 10 day versus 90 day volume is 2.54. So the volume is really ramping on the stock with the 10 day average volume being 254% of the, of the um, 90 day volume. So that's interesting. Now, if none of these products actually, sorry, none of these stocks actually were of interest to me, um, I can click on the tab called detailed results. What this does is it gives me a list of all 400 companies and where they rank in the list. There's 50 on a page, but if I wanted to, I can scroll through all 400 and find a company that looks interesting to me. Okay, so here's the, the long list, and I can get more by, by clicking um, on the next page here at the bottom. But to me, the most interesting part about Strategy Builder is this tab called Performance. So performance is what lets me backtest this strategy against the historical database that Strategy Builder keeps and find out how this strategy would have worked for me if I had used it historically. So I'm going to say calculate performance, and I'm going to name this particular strategy my mid-cap strategy. I'm going to say calculate performance. So now what Strategy Builder will do is it's going to go back in time five years. It has a historical point-in-time database included, and point-in-time means that everything in the database is as it was known or as it was reported at that given point in time. So if a company, for example, reports that their earnings are a dollar a share, and then nine months later comes along and does a restatement because of some accounting change or some mistake that was made, um, what's actually in Strategy Builder is what was known at the time um, it was reported. So it's not corrected. So what we do here is we go back in time five years from today. On day one of the back testing period, we're going to run our strategy based on the data on that day, and we're going to pick the top 10 companies that match that strategy. We're going to buy an equal weight of all 10 companies, and we're going to hold that portfolio for 90 days, so for one quarter. At the end of 90 days, we're going to rebalance. By rebalance, we're going to run the strategy again. We're going to sell some, um, we're going to sell some uh, positions, and we're going to buy some other ones. We're going to hold another 10 stocks for another 90 days. So over five years, we're going to hold a total of 20 different portfolios, each one of which was the top 10 matches of the strategy on the day it was created. Now in this, um, in the performance, we're going to include dividends, but we're not going to include the cost of trading. So what this graph now shows me is the performance of my strategy is this green line. This is the performance of my mid-cap strategy. And in fact, it did pretty well. Um, it certainly outperformed the Dow Jones Industrial Average over the same period of time. And in fact, at certain points, it significantly outperformed. But it's probably not fair to compare to the Dow Jones Industrials because that's a, a large cap stock uh, index, and this is really mid-cap. So let's pick a different index to compare against. So let's pick the S&P mid-cap 400. And comparing to that index, I do reasonably well, but not quite as well. In fact. Uh, compared to the S&P mid-cap 400, we're pretty much tracking the index right now, although there were certain periods of time where we significantly were outperforming. So this strategy is delivering uh, a five-year return of 48.6%. Now, maybe we can make this strategy a little bit better, though. So let's go back and let's try and add one more criteria and just see if we can improve the strategy. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to try to add a technical criteria. So I'm going to scroll down here to technicals, and I'm going to try to add a bullish classic pattern. And you can actually pick what kind of pattern you want. So if you want just a bottom triangle or just an upside breakout and so on, I'm going to pick any bullish classic pattern which indicates a continuation of the prior trend. So by adding that, you see my number of matches has dropped significantly. It's down to 127. And just a tip when you're building your strategies, you want to try to keep this number um, you know, reasonably large. You don't want to have five or ten stocks that match, and I'll explain why that is in a second. You want to have a fairly large number. Um, but I'm going to go back and read back test this. So this is my mid-cap strategy with, uh, with a classic pattern. So let's calculate the performance of this revised strategy. 
So actually, I've done a bit better. So my, my previous strategy was delivering 48.6% over the last five years, and this one is delivering 65.9. Uh, so I actually have done better by adding that particular technical criteria. Now, I said, why do I want to keep the number of stocks reasonably high? Because the number of stocks that match your strategy is going to change over time. Depending on the market conditions and so on, um, the number can change. So if you only have 10 stocks that match your strategy today, there's a very good chance that if you go back in time, you're going to find yourself, you know, at the time you're creating one of these 20 portfolios with very, very few stocks that match. And that can really kind of throw off the results. And in fact, if you look at the results of this particular back test, you see a couple of spots that are flat. There's a flat spot right here, right at the lows of the, uh, the market back in 2009, and another little flat spot right here. So what these flat spots indicate is at the time that strategy or that portfolio was built, Strategy Builder couldn't find any stocks that matched the criteria. So in fact, it was in cash for those three months. Um, so right at the lows of the market in 2009, I am suspecting that uh, probably the nine, this particular criteria, the 10-day versus 90-day volume, it probably couldn't, that, that probably significantly limited the number of stocks because no one was really buying a lot of stocks that particular time. And there was probably some other reason why we couldn't find a lot of stocks in this particular period here. But in any case, you want to try to keep the numbers of, of um, stocks reasonably high to make your back test results relevant. Um, now, something else I can do is I can say, show me related screens. So what this will do is it will show you other strategies that Strategy Builder knows about that are similar to this strategy based on the criteria that it contains. So this is another way you can look for ideas by leveraging other strategies that are found in the product. And suppose I want to save this now. I can say save this screen, and I can give it a name. This is Pete's mid-cap strategy. Um, I can add a description here if I want to, and you can use these things called tags. So the purpose of tags really is to make it easier for you and for others to search for strategies. So I can assign tags to this. So this is a, um, this actually uses a classic pattern. So that's one tag I want to apply. And I think we can consider this a, um, uh, maybe a swing trading strategy as well based on the volume criteria. So I'm going to add that particular um, tag as well. So I've added a couple of tags which will be associated with this particular strategy when I save it. Now this is very interesting. So you see the little box here that says share this screen with other users. If I select this box, then this strategy will be saved for me in the My Save Screens panel that I showed you earlier, but it'll also go into the community screens. So any other Lightspeed user of Strategy Builder can also leverage this strategy. So you're choosing to share it with the community. You're choosing to share your knowledge and what you found out with other users. If you leave this unticked, then this will be um, kept private to you and will not go into the community screens. You also have the option of letting Strategy Builder tell you when there are changes to the output of this particular strategy. So you can say, email me changes to the top 10 matches every day, every week, or every month. So you could even use this kind of as a rebalancing reminder that Strategy Builder would email you the, the top 10 matches for your strategy on a monthly basis. So that's, that's how you can use Strategy Builder to help in your investing decisions. So again, I'm going to pause here and see if there's any questions. No questions, Peter, so we can forge ahead. Okay, forging ahead. So I'm, I want to make sure I leave enough time for Intraday Trader. So I'm going to go maybe a little bit faster on, on Value Analyzer. Um, but Value Analyzer is a product which is used to identify whether individual stocks are overvalued, undervalued, or fairly valued based on the principles of value investing. So value investing has been around for a long, long time, and there's been sort of a set of rules that have been laid down by the value investing gurus, people like Warren Buffett and Peter Lynch and Benjamin Graham and so on. Um, so Value Analyzer tries to take those rules and embed them in software so that it's easy for you, the investor or trader, to identify at a glance whether a particular stock is a good value investment or not. And you know, many of you may be very active traders, and you may think, well, value investing is not for me, but certainly even under, identifying whether a stock is undervalued can certainly take a lot of the risk out of a trade in the sense that you have a bit of a wind at your back if uh, you're investing in uh, undervalued stocks, even if it's for the short term. So the first thing that Value Analyzer does is it gives you a featured value stock. So every single day, 
this stock is going to change. I mean, this is consider this a trade idea, but this is highlighting a particular stock which happens to be a good value investment. So in this case, it's Westinghouse Air Brake Technologies. And if you click through these three uh, panels, this is, a, this is featured because of the fact that it has a strong track record of performance. I'll talk about that in a minute. It's undervalued today, and it has a high likelihood of, uh, of returning a, an above average um, return on equity in the future. So I like to show Value Analyzer by you know, picking some interesting stocks and seeing how they, they look from a value investing perspective. So one interesting one I think is a good place to start is Google. So Google is a, obviously a technology stock, a, a growth play, but uh, you know, not a company people would associate with being a value investment. What does Value Analyzer think about Google today? Well, let's take a look. Well, I get a bit of information about Google when you go into the product. It tells you what industry it's in, who its competitors are, and so on. There's some, some summary of Google's business, what its revenue is, what its estimated EPS growth is, and so on, the PE ratio, the last price. Um, and then we give you a number of different charts. So the first chart is the revenue and earnings history. So this is a 10-year history of revenue and earnings per share paid by Google. And in fact, you can see that Google only goes back to 2003 because it hasn't been in existence for 10 years yet. But what we want to look for here is companies that have a consistent track record of growing their revenue and earnings per share. So in this chart, the blue line is revenue, and you can see the growth has been, uh, been very good. It's actually flattening out a little bit, though. And the green line is earnings per share, and you can see, again, it's also had a very, very tr good track record of growing EPS, although it has flattened out a little bit in recent years. In fact, there's a bit of a flat spot in 2008, but it's resuming that, that trajectory upward. Now, this is plotted on a log scale. So what that means is that a company growing at a continuous annual growth rate of, say, 20% will be a straight line on this particular chart. So these three dashed lines you see here give you the slope of a, of a company that's growing at 10%, 20% and 30% per year. Now something else you want to look at is things like the number of shares outstanding. <clears throat> so we'll tell you the number of shares outstanding over time for Google. And in fact, Google has been issuing a lot of shares uh, since 2003 because it, that's when it IPO'd. But the number of shares it's issuing is, is flattening out. We want to look at the debt level of companies. So here's the debt to equity ratio. And although Google has a, a, does have some debt, it's got an extremely low debt to equity ratio. It's, it's you know, 0.07 or something like that. So it's, it's very, very low compared to other companies. Ideally, we'd want to look for companies that, have a, that pay a dividend and have a history of increasing their dividends over time. Unfortunately, Google doesn't pay a dividend today. And we want to find companies that are fiscally healthy, that have lots of cash on hand. So Google has been growing their cash position and has lots and lots of cash on hand today, which is great. Hey, Peter, so we, we have a... Here. We have a request from the uh, from an uh, audience. If you could quickly run a RIM R I M M in this value analyzer. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. That'll be a nice comparison with uh, with Google, actually. But just before I do that, though, I'd like to just show you this last chart, which is called the value chart. And what this chart is trying to do is give you a sense of whether Google is fairly valued today or not. So you can see these purple bars on here. These are one-year price candles. So that represents the high and the low for a given year. And in the case of 2011, it's the year to date. Um, so you can see there's been a, there's a pretty large um, range in 2008, but it's been narrowing. And you can see there's a little hash mark here on the 2011 candle, and that's the last price. So Google is actually trading near its highs for 2011. Now, this green line is what's called the fair value line. So that line is intended to uh, reflect what value analyzer thinks the fair value of the stock is. So how do we calculate that? Well, we're actually using the definition of fair value, which Peter Lynch developed. And he said that a stock is fairly valued when its price to earnings ratio equals its historic EPS growth rate. So if a company has a price to earnings ratio of 15, then it needs to be growing its, its uh, earnings at 15% a year to be a good value investment. So in this case, we can calculate this, this line because we have the EPS growth rate that we calculate in Value Analyzer, and we have the price of the stock, so we can actually plot this green line. So where this line is actually solid, it's based on historic data, and where it goes dashed, it's projected. So today, Google is actually way, way under this line in terms of its price, and that means that it's actually undervalued based on the metrics that Value Analyzer uses. 
a stock that was actually right on the line would be fairly valued, and if it was above the line, it would be overvalued. So based on this analysis, Value Analyzer gives Google a green traffic light, meaning it's a good value investment. Now, interestingly, if you say, well, this is great, but I don't think Google can continue to grow at 40% a year, then you can do a what-if analysis. You can go into this and say, I think Google can only grow at, uh, say, 15% a year going forward. I can do that for, say, the next three years, and I can update this chart. And based on that analysis, if Google only grows at 15% a year, then it actually would be slightly overvalued uh, based on the value analysis. And because it's only slightly overvalued, it gets a yellow traffic light. So you can do this to, you know, uh, take some assumptions of your own in terms of how companies might do going forward and decide whether you know, you're comfortable with this as an investment. Now there was a request to look at RIMM. So let's go up here and look at RIMM, R-I-M-M. -M. So RIMM also gets the green traffic light. Um, in fact, it has actually grown its revenue and earnings per share very nicely over the last 10 years. In fact, the lines are even a bit straighter than, than those of, uh, of Apple. Um, and its price is way, way down because it's been beaten down significantly in the last uh, six months or so. Now, the question really is what can RIM do going forward, right? So, again, its EPS growth, it's been calculated by value analyzers 40%. But if we think it can only grow at 10% going forward, which might be a better assumption in a, you know, a really competitive market, then, you know, what, is, what does it look like then? Well, in fact, even with a 10% growth rate assumption, it's still undervalued based on value analyzers. So taking that into account, you might think that um, this might not actually be too bad of an investment because even if their growth comes way, way down, um, you know, the company is still, you know, probably a good value investment. And just for, for curiosity, let's compare that to Apple and see where Apple would turn out. So Apple, again, uh, undervalued today, and if we put a, you know, say a 10 or 15 percent assumption of its growth going forward, then Apple's going to find itself overvalued, in fact, with a 15 percent EPS growth rate assumption. So I'll show you one other interesting part about Value Analyzer, which is something called the featured value stocks. So, you know, let's suppose you've got some money you want to be conservative with it, you want to put it in your IRA or something like that. And, um, you know, maybe you want to pick some value stocks, but, um, you know, maybe you like certain industries like the electronics industry or the uh, oil and gas industry or what have you, but you may not even know who the companies are in those sectors. So what you can do is use the pre-screened value stocks. So every one of these companies listed on the screen has been pre-selected and it's guaranteed to be a green traffic light. So these would be good value investments. Now this list will be changing every day, and we'll cycle through 40 different value stocks on a daily basis. It'll be a set of new ideas here every day. But what I find interesting about this is um, there are some companies on this list that are very well known, like Microsoft, for example, is a value stock in the computer hardware and software space, or Westinghouse in the manufacturing space, or Buffalo Wild Wings under restaurants and bars. But a lot of these companies are definitely not well-known. So, for example, uh, if I look at, um, uh, would be a good example, medical services, LHC Group, Bioreference Laboratories for Medical Services, um, Cash America International under retail, Almost Family under social services. So there are definitely some companies here which um, are not well-known. And I think it was Warren Buffett that said that you know, oftentimes the best value investments are the companies no one's ever heard of. These are the companies that are not being followed by the analysts. They're not loved by Wall Street. They're lesser known companies, and even though they're working very hard behind the scenes and growing their business and doing the right things to, to grow, um, they find themselves undervalued. And this can be a great way to find companies which are, are poised for some very explosive growth. Um, and I'll, get, I'll point out again that in, just like technical insight and strategy builder, there's a very significant amount of education packaged with Value Analyzer. And if you want to learn more about value investing and how to use it to uh, you know, be a more successful investor, there's lots of education here you can leverage. So again, I'm going to pause and we'll see if there's any questions about Value Analyzer. Uh, we don't have any pending questions, so I think we can move on to the most exciting part, which our active traders are interested in, which is going to be intraday trader. 
Absolutely. So we've saved the best for last. Um, so intraday trader you'll see is its own link at the top of the page. And in fact, when you go into the technical analysis section on Lightspeed Spotlight, um, you actually get automatically launched into um, intraday trader. So this is our tool for um, finding intraday trade setups based on technical analysis. So we think this product is very, very unique and there's really nothing else in the market that's quite like it. So we actually did a lot of research in conjunction with Lightspeed where we did focus groups and so on with real users and, and tried to understand what their needs were as technical traders. So we tried to build a product that was tremendously powerful in actually finding technical trade setups, but at the same time was approachable enough for a, a novice technical trader that they could start to use it and get value from it very, very quickly. So one of the things we've done is put a lot of, um, of kind of guidance in the product to guide you through how to get started. So the first time you use the product, you get this sort of welcome screen that comes up and talks about what Intraday Trader is all about and how you can use it, and it gives you some ideas about how you might want to get started with the product. And once you've used it a few times and you're comfortable with um, using the product, you can actually hide this welcome screen and you never ever see it again. So the place to probably start in talking about this product is what are called watch lists. So one of the things that we heard from traders during our focus groups was, you know, I trade the same 30 technology stocks all day long. That's all I care about. Don't show me anything else. Or I'm trading this basket of stocks, and that's my universe. That's what I care about. So we let you customize the universe in which we will screen or, or watch for event setups. So some of these, you can create your own watch list from scratch. So you can see there's a panel here called Create a Custom Watch List. And I can, I can build my own watch list and uh, you know, add a number of stocks to it. So I can add them one by one if I want. Or I can actually cut and paste and I can put a whole long list of symbols in here and say add and those get added to my watch list. Um, so you can actually build your own watch list very, very easily. Or if you're just getting started, you can actually leverage the predefined watch list that come with the product. So to help you get started, we've given you about 30 different watch lists that are pre-built. So some of these are index constituents like the Dow Jones Industrials, the Dow Jones Transportation Stocks, the Dow Jones Utilities, and so on. Lots of traders trade ETFs today, so we give you the, a list of 300 of the highest volume ETFs in the U.S. markets today. And if you want to actually see the list of, uh, of what companies are, what, sorry, what ETFs are in that list, well, here's the list right here. Um, we also have things like a uh, list of large cap stocks. Um, and some of these stocks, some of these lists are dynamically created. So here's a list of stocks which are in a long-term downtrend. And by long-term downtrend, we mean stocks where the price is below both the 50-day and the 200-day moving average. So these lists are updated every night. Um, there are also some interesting ones like um, top rated. So this one is actually based on quantitative ratings. So Recogni actually licenses some quant ratings from a very well-known quantitative ratings firm. And we use that to pick the 300 highest rated uh, quant, sorry, highest quantitatively rated companies in the U.S. and put those into a list. Um, so lots and lots of ways of using this. And if you're looking for a certain a sector of the market, then here we have a whole bunch of, of sectors. So these are the volume leaders in each one of these particular sectors. So the next thing, once you have your watch list defined, is to say, you know, what is it I'm watching for? What's my setup? And there are lots and lots of different setups that technical traders like to use, but again, we did our, our focus groups. People told us that oftentimes it's not just one thing, it's a combination of things that I'm looking for. I'm looking for um, the price to pierce the upper Bollinger Band in conjunction with um, a MACD above the signal line. That might be an example of a technical trade setup. So multiple things happening at the same time. So in the event setup library, you can build your own custom setup, and I'll show you how to do that. Or you can sort through a whole bunch of setups that have been created and come packaged with the product. So these are setups that um, you know, are looking for, for certain kinds of events. And one of the ones I want to just stop on for a second is, um, is this one called Wave the Flag. So this is a very, very useful trade setup that I find is, is very interesting in my trading. And this is looking for a flag pattern. So for those of you who are not really familiar with technical analysis, a flag is a particular kind of classic pattern where you know, in a bullish flag we're looking for a very, very steep run-up, and that's called the flag pole, followed by a consolidation period where the price moves kind of sideways and slightly downward, and that forms the flag. 
Um, you can have both bullish and bearish flags. But this is a very, very useful trade setup I find in identifying short-term trading opportunities. So just for fun, let's, let's build our own trade setup. So I'm going to say build my own custom setup. And I'm going to look for um, kind of an unusual setup here. I'm going to look for um, a particular um, uh, bar pattern uh, setup. And by the way, all the events that can be used in your event setups are organized again into folders. And the first folder is uh, bar patterns, things like exhaustion bars and inside bars and key reversal bars and so on. There are candlestick patterns like uh, shooting stars and hammers and gravestones and so on. And you can see if, if you're not quite sure about the, um, whether a particular pattern like a hammer is bullish or bearish, well, the icon we use tells you that it's, this is a bullish pattern. There are classic patterns like diamonds and wedges and flags and head and shoulders and so on. Gap patterns, gap up and gap down. Moving averages and oscillators. So all the common technical analysis oscillators are found here. So let's try to build ourselves a pattern. I'm going to look for, um, I'm going to build myself a bullish pattern. Uh, I think the market may turn around in the next few days. So I'm going to look for what's called an island bottom. So this is a very interesting uh, pattern where we're, we're looking for um, a series of bars which are um, uh, in kind of in a row but below on both sides the, um, the prices on, on, uh, on either side. So it forms a, a sustained bottom after a downtrend. So I'm going to add that as my first criteria. And I can further customize if I want in terms of specifying the inbound trend, but I'm not going to do that. And I can go on and add a second one. So I'm also going to add an oscillator, which is um, momentum above zero. So momentum is a very, very useful indicator. And again, I'm picking uh, a bullish criteria here. So I've got two different um, criteria as part of my strategy today. Um, and by the way, if I want to find more information about this particular um, event, momentum above zero, you can see as I click through these different, um, these different panels here, it gives me more information about what this particular setup is telling me and how to use it in my trading. So once I'm happy with that, I can say next, and I can go on to name this particular strategy. So this is Pete's Island Bottom. And this happens to be a long strategy because I'm looking for bullish events. And the trading stuff trading style is, um, this is a trend trading style. I can add a description if I want. And then I go on and I can save this particular strategy. So when I save it, Intraday Trader will ask me, do you want to put it on your radar? So on your radar is the terminology that we use to specify event setups which are actively being applied against a specific watch list. So if I say OK, it's going to say, okay, I'll put it on your radar. Which watch list do you want me to use? So let's use that one called top rated that I described before. So these are good quality stocks based on quantitative ratings, and I'm watching them for this particular bullish setup. So when I say save, that goes onto my radar. So what actually happens now is we've, we've changed tabs. So we're now in the on my radar tab, and I've got this new panel that's popped up called Pete's Island Bottom Opportunities. So we're watching the watch list called Top Rated for this particular event setup called Pete's Island Bottom. And you see if I hover my mouse, I actually get a description of what is actually being watched. Now right now, this is completely blank. Um, the market is closed, so there's no bars coming in right now. But you'll see it says Processing Results. So what's happening is Intraday Trader will go out and look back at the last few trading days and see if there are any instances of this trade setup which are in play right now. And the reason I want, I want to do that is, you know, first of all, let's suppose it wasn't uh, uh, 5.25. Let's suppose it was 2 o'clock in the afternoon. This trade setup might have triggered only a half an hour ago. And it'd be nice to know that it's in play when I'm actually trading during the day. Second of all, we're going to go back and look up how often this particular trade setup has triggered in the last few days because it gives me a sense of, you know, how often I can expect this to trigger going forward. I said this was a fairly rare uh, pattern. The island bottom is not very common, but in fact, if you look at this, I actually had um, a number of instances of this trade setup triggering today. I had uh, three times, I guess, at 1 p.m. it triggered, once at 11.30, once at 10 a.m., and a couple times at, at 9.45. So it's triggered about uh, six or seven times today, it looks like. So that gives me a sense of about how often I could expect this to, this to trigger going forward. Um, now, remember we talked about that pattern called, um, called wave the flag? I come down to the bottom. Here is 
that wave the flag pattern that we talked about or event setup we talked about. So this is the wave the flag um, bullish. Sorry, what's going on here? I've got two of those. So here's the wave the flag bearish and wave the flag bullish. And uh, I'm going to just take a look at this. So it's kind of been a down a few days in the market, but um, let's just pick a few historical events and see how this uh, pattern would have worked out. So here's an event on a stock called Sigma Aldrich Corp, which triggered on July 26th, which I think was yesterday. Um, or is that two days ago? Yes, yeah, two days ago. Uh, no, yesterday. Um, so this particular stock was at $70.73 when this particular event setup triggered. And the target price we got uh, based on the pattern was 69.85 to 70.05. And in fact, here you see the flagpole coming down. This red markup shows the flag pattern. This red square is the time at which the event was confirmed. And you in fact see that even though we were in a bit of a consolidation period here, we did resume a very steep decline in the price of the stock. So I would have done you know, pretty well if I was short this stock. So the next one is Sears Holding Company. So again, it was in a steep decline, had a consolidation period and resumed its steep decline again. Uh, Assurant the stock which is trading very mixed in the last few days. Again, there's the flagpole. Um, here's the consolidation period and we did resume a fairly steep decline. So, you know, I would have actually done pretty well if I was trading this particular uh, trade setup over the last few days. Um, now, the other thing I wanted to show you is, let's suppose um, I want to know a bit more about this particular pattern. And you'll see that there's a link here called commentary. And what the commentary link does is tells me in plain English what this particular event is all about. So on this particular event, the way of the flag bearish trade setup on the company Assurant Inc., here you have what happened. A bearish flag pattern was confirmed today at 12 p.m. when the price broke downward out of a consolidation period. The price seems to be resuming a sharp decline after taking a brief pause. This pattern formed over two hours and 15 minutes, which is a rough guide for how long it might take to reach the target price of 34.65 to 34.71. So there in plain English is everything I need to know to trade this particular setup. It tells me what has happened, uh, what it means, and what I could expect to happen going forward all based on the principles of technical analysis. And we're almost out of time, but the last thing I'll show you is the event dashboard, which is where we actually started. So this is where you'll probably spend the majority of your time in Intraday Trader. This is where you can see the output of all of the trade setups that are on your radar aggregated into one place. So as the bars come in and new trade setups are triggered, you'll see them populating on the event dashboard, each one of which has a chart that goes along with it. And the, the uh, commentary we talked about is shown at the bottom of the screen right here. So this is a very, very easy way to watch for event setups and trade opportunities uh, which trigger throughout the trading day. And I'll mention to you that any one of these uh, panels that I've showed you in Intraday Trader can be detached. You can actually take it off and detach it, move this around your screen as you so choose, and you'll actually see you have the event setups coming in here uh, live in real time. And I can actually close the whole web browser window and just leave this little window open, and um, I can actually relaunch the full application whenever I want with this link called Launch Full Application. So lots and lots of, of ways of using Intraday Trader to help you in your, uh, your trade decisions. So we're very close to the end of our time, but I'll turn it back to Mike and see if there's any questions. Perfect. Thanks, Peter. Uh, we'll definitely have to do another webinar just, just focusing on Intraday Trader because I think we have a lot more that we can cover there that our audience would be interested in. Oh, for and, sure. And uh, we do have a couple questions coming in. And the first one is uh, regarding what products the scanner can work on. Uh, does it work on equities, options, futures, ETFs? I'm sorry, which product was that, Mike? The Intraday Trader. So Intraday Trader is, is being applied against um, stocks and ETFs on the U.S. markets. So it does not apply to, to futures or, or options today. Now, how you actually play the trade setup could certainly be through an option strategy, but what we're actually scanning is the underlying equity. Okay, and another question is, is the product web-based? And I think even I can handle that question. Yes, it is web-based, so you can access it from any PC. And if you're trading on the Lightspeed Trader platform, you can just run it uh, alongside in a web browser. And it looks like that's all the questions that we have. So 
Peter, you've certainly done a great job going over all this information. Ton of uh, useful info there, uh, and I really hope that our customers start to uh, get engaged with this product and start benefiting from everything that it has to offer. Uh, and like I mentioned before, we would definitely love to have you back to do another presentation strictly focused on intraday trader. So thank you again for a great presentation. Um, okay. Another thing I'd like to mention, because this question also came up throughout the webinar, is uh, whether it will be archived or not. And yes, we archive all our webinars, we record them, and then post them on our website. So if you missed anything or you just want to come back and review what we covered today, you can go to lightspeed.com forward slash webinar and you'll see a posting of all our recorded webinars and this one will be up there probably within the next two or three days. So with that, I would like to thank our audience for joining us and I hope to see you on the next webinar. Thanks everyone. Thank you.